Hello, uh, I'm Adnan Darwish, and this is joint work with uh, Pierre Marquis. So our interest here is in developing a theory for explaining the behaviors of classifiers. Uh, these are boxes learned from data. They take instances, render decisions on them, and we're interested in questions like these. Uh, why was a particular decision made? Is it robust? Is it biased? So over the last few years, a significant amount of work have tackled these kind of questions uh, by combining the input-output behavior of the classifier into a symbolic representation and then using reasoning uh, on these representations to answer these uh, questions. And uh, in this earlier work, which includes ours, typically, uh, people use uh, specialized representations uh, for the input-output behavior, which are meant to facilitate reasoning, like tractable circuits, decision graphs, and then also specialized algorithms uh, that are specialized per query and per representation. And what we're trying to do here is uh, something more general and broader in scope, <clears throat> where we will not assume a particular representation. Uh, in fact, we will just use logical formulas to represent classifiers. And the fundamental insight behind the work is that to reason with these symbolic representations and therefore answer uh, explainable AI queries, we will rely mainly on uh, the process of quantification. This is uh, a, a, an operation that has a long tradition in, in logic. We will actually look at specialization of it and we'll see it plays a fundamental role in answering not only these queries, but many more and some open-ended queries related to explainable AI. Now, there is a computational component to this theory, and it takes the form of studying the complexity of quantification, and, and we will do that uh, as well. But let's take a concrete example uh, first. So we have a classifier here, which is a naive-based classifier. It has uh, three features, uh, class variable. We typically compute posterior on the class variable, check against the threshold, and then decide whether to classify a patient as pregnant or not. And, and the point is I can capture the behavior of this classifier using formulas. Uh, we'll see this next, but first notation. So this is a Boolean variable. This says that that variable is true. This says that that variable is false, so positive and negative literals. In this particular case, I just need two formulas to represent this classifier because I have only two classes, positive and negative. And here are the formulas. Uh, the first formula, which is this one, uh, captures the positive instances. The second formula captures the negative instances. Once I have these formulas, I don't need the classifier. I can use them to both classify and to reason about the behavior of the classifier, as we will see in just a little bit. Now, uh, these are binary features, and we have binary classes, but more generally, uh, we can handle discrete features, we can handle multi-classes, uh, you just need more than one formula in that particular case. These two papers uh, contain the details on this more uh, general setting. Okay, let's now talk about Boolean quantification and then how we're going to use it to achieve the goal uh, that uh, we uh, set ourselves to. And there is existential quantification and universal quantification. In both cases, we quantify a variable from a formula. Here, x is a variable, delta is a formula. Here are the definitions of these operations. Let's start with the first one. Up there, this says take the formula delta and replace every occurrence of variable x with true. So we're rep re replacing occurrences of the variable with the constant true. We say we are conditioning the formula on x being true. Now, this says condition the formula on x being false. We disjoin them, we get our quantified uh, Boolean formula in this particular case. Universal quantification is the same, except that we use conjunctions instead of disjunctions. Now, uh, relatively recently, uh, compared to the history of quantification, a proposal was made to uh, use a more defined notion of existential quantification, where we quantify a state of variable or a literal from a formula. That's the definition. This is more general because we can use it to define variable quantification. We just have to quantify both states of the variable. The order does not matter. Um, uh, quantification is commutative. Now, existential quantification uh, receives significant attention in AI. And, and the reason is it's for getting semantics. And what that means is, when you existentially quantify a, a variable from a formula, 
uh, this amounts to erasing the information that the formula has about the planet. And similarly, when you quantify a literal from a formula, you are erasing the information that the formula has about the literal. So that has all kinds of applications. Universal quantification did not receive as much attention. It does not have as sharp, intuitive, and usable semantics. And in this work, actually, we do exactly that. We do provide semantics for universal quantification and show that it's significant for explainable AI. In fact, we actually also define a refinement on variable quantification in this case, and uh, we uh, propose universal literal quantification, which is also more general and or more refined. The semantics we give is selection. We'll talk about this later. And we show that this operation is, again, fundamental for explainable AI, due particularly to the semantics. So let's see it in action. We have the same classifier. We have an instance Susan tested positive for scanning blood and negative for urine. According to this classifier, she, she is pregnant. So now we want to know why is Susan pregnant? We can answer this question using quantification. We're not going to use the classifier. We're going to use the formulas that represent the classifier. This is our instance, corresponds to three variable settings. It, it does satisfy the positive formula. Now, we're going to answer this why question by computing the complete reason behind the decision. This is a notion that was introduced about two years ago. And it is a sufficient and necessary condition behind the decision. And what we showed is we can get that complete reason by quantifying the literals of the instance from the corresponding formula, as shown in this equation. And the, the result of this quantification here is a simple formula that says scanning is positive. That's the complete reason. So it's telling us the reason Susan was classified as pregnant is because she tested positive for scanning. The other two tests did not matter. Here's another example that I'm going to show you next. But first, sometimes we use this notation uh, for quantification where we quantify the instance collectively as opposed to writing individually each of its variable settings. In this example, we have Kim tested negative on everything not pregnant, complete reason, computed by quantifying the negative formula in this case, because this is a negative instance. You can see it's a little bit more involved. Uh, it's telling us you can see two reasons why this classification was made. The scanning was negative and blood was negative. That's one reason. Another reason is scanning was negative and urine was negative. Uh, I, did, I did need scanning to be negative for this decision, but I did not need both blood and urine to be negative in this particular case. All right. Now, the, the ability to uh, capture the complete reason using quantification is pretty important uh, because of its connection to other notions. Uh, so suppose you have... A, a, a class that's represented by a formula delta and consider an instance that belongs to this class. So what we know now is uh, the prime implicants of this quantified Boolean formula, which represents the complete reason. These prime implicants correspond to what people have been studying over the last few years uh, under the label of PI explanations, abductive explanations, and sufficient reasons. We also know more recently that the prime implicates of this quantified Boolean formula uh, correspond to what people have been studying under the labels of contrastive explanations, counterfactual explanations, and necessary reasons. Uh, these uh, notions have quite a bit of applications, and they're just prior implicants and implicates of the quantified Boolean formula representing the complete reason. Now, what else can be done uh, with quantification? Uh, quite a bit, actually. So you can identify features or characteristics that are irrelevant to a decision by evaluating a quantified Boolean formula. You can decide whether a decision is biased by evaluating a quantified Boolean formula. In fact, we show in the, in the paper, on, uh, in addition to these things, that uh, uh, quantification together with uh, logical connectives gives you a query language for uh, uh, phrasing open-ended queries, like find me all instances on which a biased positive decision will be made. You can write a Boolean formula quantified one whose solutions are precisely these instances. And you can see all of the details in the uh, journal uh, paper on the subject. Uh, which also discusses other things like algorithms for universal uh, 
literal quantification showing how it can be done in linear time on certain uh, forms of uh, logical uh, formulas. One last word on selection semantics. This is very important. Suppose you have a classifier with three classes and these classes are captured by these formulas. So each one of these formulas captures a number of instances. And you go ahead and write an expression like this. You're universally quantifying literals from the second class formula. What does this mean? What we have shown is the main theorem of this work is that this formula is selecting a subset of the class instances. The question is what instances are being selected? It is those that do not depend on these literals for their membership in that class. Meaning, if you have a class, delta sub i, and you have an instance that belongs to it, and that instance contains characteristics of the set, then what we can do is we can flip these characteristics as we wish. And the resulting instance will remain in that class. That's what it means not to depend on these particular characteristics. Those are the ones that are being selected by universal literal quantification. And that stands behind quite a bit of the results that we derived in this uh, line of work. All right, read the journal paper, hopefully. And I'm done here. Just leave you with some uh, concluding remarks. Thank you.